welcome to the stage to announce our very first People's Choice Victorian Blues legend he is. Please welcome Jeff Atchison to the stage. Nominations for the uh, 2019 People's Choice Victorian Blues legend. Kelly Orty. Fiona Boys. Ian Collard, Sweet Felicia, Jimmy Hocking, I don't know who he is, Jeff Lang, Phil Manning, Andrea Ma, Kerry Simpson, Broderick Smith, Lloyd Spiegel, Chris Wilson. Just think about all the music that's been produced by those people. The winner is the truly legendary Chris Wilson. Here's to Chris Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a drink for Chris. Um, it's hard to encapsulate everything that Chris did and was to the blues community in one speech. But I think it'd be safe for all for me to say that all the nominees and everyone here tonight wanted Chris to be the one who was first inducted into the um, Blues Music Victoria Hall of Fame. Of all of us, yeah. Thank you. All of us, um, Chris deserves the award. He, he did more playing and more to promote blues music across the country than any of us for decades. As you all know, he was a giant of a man and he lived and he breathed the blues. He was always committed 100% and he played thousands of gigs over the years. I've seen him backstage sick and tired and worn out and collapsed on a couch absolutely knackered and then he'd jump up and he'd get on stage and then just prowl and stomp and blow everybody's minds in the audience. He was prolific. This microphone? Yeah. He was prolific. Like any working musician he played and loved a diverse range of styles and wrote a significant body of original work but everything he played was always informed by the blues. He was highly insightful and intelligent man. He read about and listened incessantly to all kinds of blues and music. He had an extraordinary astute understanding of the human condition which showed in his lyrics and the way he delivered a note. He understood the importance of the placement of just one note or just one word, one bend or a twist, a multitude of notes or words or bends. Regardless of the genre he was playing in, every note was underpinned by his massive command and inherent understanding of the blues. He was one of the best songwriters of his generation. He could write songs that could make you laugh, make you cry. He was observant and he understood people and his songs touched you. He wrote iconic Australian songs, things like Shoot Out at the 7-Eleven, which at its heart is blues. He always sought out new bands and players and he had an ear for talent. He was a massive supporter of other musicians, male and female. He employed female musicians and wrote his long way before that was a thing. He didn't care about whether somebody was well known or just somebody starting out. He'd chat, discuss and pass on his formidable knowledge to anyone who had a genuine interest. He'd sit in and play with beginners or experienced musicians. He didn't care, he just loved playing. He never gave fame any mind at all. In fact, he, he hated the whole fame kind of thing. Um, one night, <laughs> we were at a club in Richmond and um, I was broke, I'd just come back from New Orleans and I'd had all my money stolen. And um, I'd walked from St Kilda down to Richmond just so I could go and see Chris and Vicar and a few people play. The club owner didn't want me to get up and sing or give me a gig because he told Chris I wasn't famous enough. And uh, Chris uh, didn't like that one bit. But um, later on in the night, Bob Dylan's band came in and I was just standing at the side stage um, drinking Chris's rider. <laughs> I didn't have any money to buy any drinks, but um, 
and I had a, it was sort of winter time and I had this big fur coat on and the next thing I know I just had this huge big hand come over the side stage and grab me by the back of the coat, shoved me on the stage and just said, if anyone fucking deserves to be on this stage, Simpson, it's you now, fucking sing and threw me at the microphone. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> That's the kind of person that he was. Yeah. That's the kind of person he was. And I wasn't the only person that he did that kind of thing from when his mum, Betty, um, took ill with cancer. It was just as Chris's career was taken off nationally with Mushroom Records, but he stopped his career and um, threw it all in to look after his mum. That's the kind of guy he was. Um, one of the reasons he loved blues music so much was because it's music for everybody. It's people's music, something everyone can feel, whether they're educated or not. And blues has primal power, as you all know, that connects and Chris had that same power on and off stage. For those of you who are here tonight that were fortunate enough to see him perform, you know that when he hit the stage and hit his straps, the whole room went with him. And I've seen and heard thousands of musicians from all around the world in my time, but no one anywhere could equal Chris Wilson in his stride. His voice and his heart playing resonated deeply inside and took you to another part of the planet. He made people feel good. He made people feel hopeful and happy. He made you reflect, but he always made you feel. He made you feel connected. And as a musician playing alongside him, the experience I think Shannon Bourne first said was transcendental. And the extent to which he affected people throughout his career was witnessed by the music community's reaction and support when he became ill. He loved community, he passionately loved music and always worked towards bringing people together and helping people out. Teaching secondary, primary school kids, helping out oldies, looking out for mates, teaching harp, all that sort of stuff. Over the years, so many people who had been suffering and having a hard time found Chris's music helped them and made them feel better. And when he was ill, so many people came up to me at different gigs um, different festivals and gigs and told me stories about how they'd gone to see Chris play when they were down in the dumps, feeling suicidal, just got divorced, come out of hospital and Chris had made them feel better and changed their lives and how if they hadn't gone to that gig to see Chris that night, things would have been very different. And the stories, they were always the same, that if they hadn't been to see Chris, it, it, their lives would have been totally stuffed up forever. He never helped people for his own gain. He never sought attention. But there's lots of times he'd like slip me 50 bucks and say, see that guy over there? Give him 50 bucks and tell him to go and get a guitar lesson. Or there's another time when a mate of ours was um, down on their luck and he gave me 50 bucks and there was a friend of mine as well, as Chris's, and said, Simo, go and buy him some groceries, will you? Make sure they get them. <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, when I came back, broke from New Orleans that time, Chris said to me, Simpson, or Simo, consider it a payment for an education in life. And then he slipped 50 bucks down my cowboy boot. <laughs> and it was acts like that to hundreds of people over the years that touched so many people and made such an impact. And the respect and love for Chris was evident. And um, it shows tonight in this award, induction into the Hall of Fame. It was a blessing that he got to understand just how much of an impact he'd made on other people's lives before he died. He was a humble man. He's a very spiritual man, but if he was with us tonight, he'd probably be standing backstage cracking jokes and saying how he didn't deserve it and everybody else deserved to win more than him. He had a wicked, wicked sense of humour and he'd throw out lines and jokes at gigs and have the whole audience laughing. He was fearless on stage and he hated bullshit. This same club I was talking about before, Pat Cash came in one night. Lots of celebrities used to come in and Pat Cash came in pissed and he wanted to get up and sing with Chris. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else was there that night, but Chris told him to get fucked. <laughs> and then he said, I don't fucking come down to the tennis centre and ask if I can fucking play it with you, mate. <laughs> yeah. And then I found out later that the 50 bucks he'd slipped me was Pat Cash's pay. He said, he doesn't fucking need it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he's a very funny man. He's a great sense of justice. But, um, of course, nobody makes a career like that and manages to work like that without support of family and friends. And 
Chris's mum, Betty, looked after his management for years. He used to have to ring Betty to <laughs> book his gigs. And then, of course, later on, the love of his life, the beautiful Miss Sarah Carroll and his two incredible sons, Finn and George. They're his legacy and he lives on through each of them. And I'm proud to say that all three of them have got albums coming out really soon. So Chris would have been really, really chuffed about that. If he was here tonight, he'd been truly humbled and honoured to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. It would have meant so much to him, more than other awards that he'd won, because this night in Blues Music Victoria has been set up by people who genuinely love and care about the blues, blues music and blues musicians, like he did. So thank you to all those people who nominated him and to everyone who voted for Chris. And echoing back almost the same words he once said to me, if anyone deserves to be a blues legend in this Blues Music Victoria Hall of Fame, it's fucking you, Wilson. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to call up the beautiful Sarah Carroll, Fenn Wilson and Georgie Wilson. Jumping around on microphones. I'd like to thank everybody that voted for my father, our father. It means a great deal, particularly to receive this award in the, um, the pool and the presence of the other musicians involved. He, um, He would often talk to us about how he would find solace in his music and solace in performing. It means a great deal to be in this room where we got to perform together so many times and have an ace time with it. It's, um, yeah. He found a real home in his music and in us and in you also, thank you very much. <laughs> 